Not really. <laughs> thank you. Um, <clears throat> well, thank you for this uh, keynote. Um, I'm on, um, so you have the advantage that you can digest and we have to talk again. Um, <laughs> Why you can digest, I need to digest it actually. There were so many things in there. Uh, it's really hard to kind of add something to it. Um, so it might be more appropriate to kind of comment on stuff you said. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, because I, there's really nothing I can really think of to, to add, maybe. But there are so many uh, things I'm really glad you brought up in your talk, uh, especially the first part, making maps as a tool. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> and I engaged into this myself, and maps as a method. Um, still use it um, a lot of times. Um, and then, of course, your, I didn't know that, your uh, research on protests, and I researched the Indignado protests and the Occupy movement myself a bit, and I met a guy from Spain who walked there, so I'm really familiar with that, and I also find it a fascinating field because the whole mess becomes like really apparent there. Like the media usage, the media coverage, the being in one place, at this, in many places at the same time, and like, it was crazy. I would add to this because you were all talking about uh, you were always talking about communication, how you kind of mapped communication and followed communication. I would also, of course, like I did a couple of times in this conference already, say it's for me it was really important to look at the practices of the actors there because the practices are not only like not only speech acts, but there was a lot of like bodily practices involved. Like the guys, the Indignado guys, some of them walked from Spain to Brussels and kind of stopped in Cologne and collected other people and, and kind of you know taught them how to hold an assemblea uh, and stuff like that. Taught them the sign language that is used there uh, in order to communicate, like techniques like human microphone and stuff like that. Of course, they also they also have something to do with communicating, but it's a lot m more. I think it's a lot more, also a lot more where bodies are involved. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I found interesting about this. But other than that, I found it. Yeah, it was fascinating how these uh, how these practices are both like in a place, but also digital or in, in digital media on platforms. I exp um, it, it and another thing it shows it's really worthwhile looking at appropriation of technology as an alternative to proprietary platforms or look at how proprietary platforms are get locally appropriated and then they change their meaning or they change their function or they change the, the affordances are different then. And that's really interested, uh, interesting also from a design perspective that when things get appropriated, the intentional, like the intended usage gets totally like changed or altered. That can happen. I mean, with the protests, you mentioned like the real timeness of Twitter was used actually for spatial coordination. And I was walking through Frankfurt, like using Twitter data to, or using the tweets to actually, you know, uh, adjust my route there because I didn't want to end up in a, the famous German police castle, uh, the, the circle, you know, they, they hold you in and stuff like that. So, so Twitter was not like, a, was not a mobilizing platform anymore or something to share or where you communicated with, like, but you coordinated spatially. So that was really interesting for me. Uh, so that's, that's one thing I wanted to add, like look at the, but you also had it in your talk, like look at the appropriation of technology. And also what you mentioned, like if you, maybe sometimes it's not enough to criticize stuff, but to also think about how to build alternatives and we talked about this in the last panel, like who you need to build these alternatives is also an interesting question. Who do you have to, do you have to you know, build alliances with? Like um, if you don't like the way your tools are, maybe you should start building new tools. And if you can't do it, then maybe you should start looking for people who can and kind of build these alliances. So yeah, that's also probably the design perspective again we talked about last time. So a lot of interesting things are happening in in design right now, so it's worthwhile maybe to join forces, uh, you know, analyzing critically, but also go get into making stuff. You know. So that would be probably the, these are my were my main points right now. Maybe I add some more later. We go future. <laughs> hmm? We go to the future. Yes. 
Okay, so uh, maybe I, pr I proceed then. I, I took a, a slightly different approach uh, when I was invited to the panel, so it's not a direct response uh, to, to your talk. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I was thinking of, okay, how can we wrap up the conference? So what, what did we do here the last few days? And I did, did a little bit of a research for this panel, and I counted how often the term GU Media uh, was used in the conference program, including the abstracts. So, uh, any guesses? What, what do you think? Uh, how many times the term Geo Media popped up in the program? <laughs> Anyone? What is the total of words? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, so we can estimate. I didn't, I didn't count that, but, <laughs> but just a rough uh, guess. So, what do you think? So, you think it's low? Any? I don't know how guess. Okay. Twice? Twice? Oh, no, it's a little bit more. <laughs> 20? Yeah? Okay. So, five? Okay, so I counted. Sorry? So you counted it? Really? <laughs> okay, so I included the abstracts and I came, <laughs> I was able to count the term TU Media 27 times. Um, okay, however, <laughs> however, I would like to draw a more differentiated picture uh, and show in which context the term uh, is used. So first of all, uh, I would like to subtract one mention because it was only a, a quote of the conference title, so I wouldn't count that. Uh, so we have 26 mentions then. So um, in addition, uh, there were um, two panels, or there are, I mean, it's already going on now. <laughs> so, but we have two panels uh, at the whole conference that, that are directly linked or that directly deal uh, with the history of the term or the current status or the future. And uh, namely this, this panel, of course, and uh, we previously had uh, the panel on, of our... Uh, Media Geographies uh, Working Group. And uh, so in, in this panel abstract, the term was used 10 times uh, in the description. And in the previous panel that I mentioned from our working group, uh, the term was used four times in the panel description. So there are only uh, 12 mentions uh, left for the rest of the <laughs> abstracts, uh, which strongly accumulate to just a few abstracts. And that's quite inter interesting, I think. So one was the de description of panel three, visual to your media and tourist worlds, uh, with four mentions. And panel six with the abstract of Hedwig Wagner, oh, she's not here anymore, uh, on digital cross-border re regions, a geo media and border studies approach. And especially on panel 11, uh, on geo media technologies between surveillance and survival, where the abstract of Yi Fan Chen, uh, Mapping My Family Story, uh, mentions the term six times. Okay, so this, this is a lot of numbers going on, I know. So, <laughs> but in summary, the, the term Chiu Media was mentioned in five panels. So two of which dealt with the current state of the future of the concept. So in other words, there were 15 of the panel descriptions not using the term. Okay, and I'm, <laughs> no, I mean, like, <laughs> I'm fully aware that this is just a funny little math game here, and it maybe uh, doesn't say so much uh, about the whole, uh, the whole concept, but on the other, on the other hand, um, maybe there could be some conclusions drawn from that, uh, nevertheless. So, um, my thought on this, or my conclusion on this could be, does it mean, or is the question, I mean, we, I would love to discuss it with you, and it's the question, so does it mean that we all do geomedia research, but do not talk geomedia? Or is it perhaps more the case that geomedia offers a conceptual space or a transdisciplinary endeavor under which very diverse research can take place that addresses the reciprocal influence between space and media? Or maybe we could use the metaphor of the elephant in the room <laughs> for this, meaning that we all do research on different parts of the elephant. So metaphorically, uh, this would mean that some explore the trunk, some the ears, some the tail, you get it. But um, all explore <laughs> parts of the big picture without talking about the elephant. So. <laughs> So, so are we going to have a discussion about this now? <laughs> Eventually. Okay. 
So the commentary is a challenging uh, genre. Uh, first, you prepare something in anticipation of the topic and the discussions. Then you experience the conference where you start rethinking all the thoughts you had um, in the first place. And then you listen to the talk, you have to comment, and this gives everything another twist. Um, so I had so many moments in your talk uh, where I would have loved to jump in, um, but the last one was um, the kick. So your uh, idea of thinking the futures of geomedia must be a shared thing. Um, besides, everything else you said really res uh, resonates with me, um, because I think perhaps we can take it even further and say that we have to actively engage in future-making geomedia. Um, and I would like to share um, two thoughts I prepared beforehand, then we thought, and now try to twist it a bit, let's see what happens. Um, so it's a kind of a summary of observations I had throughout the uh, conference, because I saw, I saw two themes um, which align with my research as well as our initiative, um, uh, our media geographies uh, initiative. And these two led to the central idea um, I want to feature in the comment. Um, so one theme was the uh, relation between body and effect. I attended some panels who featured that idea. And I think also technologies in the context of geomedia have become smaller, smarter, closely linked to the body that could be a, a further direction to observe how they continue to interrelate with bodies and perhaps also um, we could readdress phenomenological debates um, about the body, technologies, and um, place, or also nature. Um, and this connects to uh, another thing that is the historical and social context. And I would like to um, quote from the first panel today, but I see um, Magnus Andersen is not here anymore. That's unfortunate. But he quote, uh, he had this nice quote, history does not repeat but rhymes. Um, and I think it's important to, when we think about uh, geomedia futures, also to remember its histories, to trace traditions, um, to look at the debates that have already been there, um, and connect both. And this leads me to the final idea, which concerns the forward directions in methodologies and methods. Um, perhaps I repeat a bit what we uh, talked about in the panel before. But it's this idea of sharing, um, and you mentioned already that we have to include other actors, um, go beyond the university and academia, um, take actors as experts, include NGOs, initiatives, try to create new spaces, um, like new thinking labs, where we could not only think about geomedia future, but really actively engage and make it happen in some sort, so mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, wow, some more food for thought. Thank you to all the commentators as well. Um, certainly there are so many themes to discuss here and it concerns both due media as a sort of socio-technical regime or technology, but also as a research field. So it also turns into a meta discussion about what the due media studies, tradition or research field should be like or is like. So I'm sure that you, now that you have digested a bit <laughs> and also got some new insights perhaps or perspectives or being provoked perhaps in certain ways, who knows, uh, you may have some comments or questions or reflections that you want to share with us. So the floor is open for that. Hi, and thanks everyone to these inspiring comments and also a great talk, which I nonetheless felt slightly provoked by, <laughs> and which kind of relates, I think, to the nice counting of, of, 
who was mentioning it to your media, because I, I felt slightly excluded in your talk in terms of what my research does, and, and sort of I thought, oh, so I'm not to your media after all, uh, which is an interesting question, exactly. I mean, what, what is the field in a way that we're studying? And you were mentioning geodata um, and, and, and maps, which are both important points and have popped up in the conference in very inspiring ways. But I thought, yeah, that's not what I do. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not more about me, but it is, I'm not trying to say, oh, you should have included me, but it's, it's more about this, exactly that question, sort of, where does the field end, or where is it, I mean, sometimes I think it is rather specific, and those are really important fields, and that's where it, maybe it speaks best to this, exactly that concept of geomedia. And then there's more blurry areas, I think, which I feel myself working in, which you could maybe label geomedia, but maybe not, and does it, so the question for me is more, does it contribute something? Do I contribute to the field, but also does it contribute something to my work? In a way? And I'm not expecting you to answer that. But it's, it's, so, so there is an interesting question of what actually does geomedia stand for? And I think that's something where you've begun to answer, but I think that's something we also need to discuss amongst ourselves a bit more. Yeah, sorry, what, what, is, what is your research about? <laughs> Just to map it. Uh, sorry, can you give me a headline of your research that you feel it's excluded? Um, I'm saying this because um, I mean, not meant to exclude. Actually, my, my, it, the, the, the talk, the, the talk in a way moved to a safe place backwards. Precisely because of that, as in, because we don't know, or I don't know, I've, I've been looking at the literature, there are definitions of all sorts, definitions that land on the technical conditions, definitions that land on the regime of, definitions that land on the material of the devices, and definitions that land on some symbolic process, and... I did not want to sit on any of those. But because I think that the richness of the field at this stage, if it's a field, has to do with the absence of uh, a normative space where it's decided what belongs and what doesn't. It's actually the other way around. It's how do we make that space bigger as a zone of thinking that wasn't there. And the zone of thinking is that, that metaphor of the fingers that probably went through the hundred thousands of words that just went with this and the stuff that I left behind because I wanted to keep at the 30, at the 30 minute zone, if it was longer than that, but almost. And, and that, that, the plan was precisely that. Offer, offer a space for thinking, put the wedge in, and open from there so that we have that space of. Instead, there are two ethical, two ethical points I want to highlight, and I didn't mention them because I, I had to delete the, the, the slide on um, Hannah Arendt. And the two, the two ethical points involve, one is the, uh, the action and, and as, as a, a form of a public commitment for the for the collective good, something that we need to do in our research, we have to commit to this kind of good. And the second element, um, sorry, had to do with, uh, ah, I miss it, hang on. Trying to remember, I, I tried to remember the, the presentation that wasn't here. So, uh, I won't, it, it, it will come back. But the the, the, the point was, Precisely to build to build that space. Oh yeah, the second aspect had to do with a commitment towards a research that uh, that acknowledges both place, location, and a symbolic level that that equivocally negotiates with it, tenses against it, and it's because of that that we need to think about it because it just doesn't fit. And that not fitting is the opportunity for further thinking. So we need to first acknowledge that there's a, a, a lack of fitting of it by which they, the map 
does not fit reality, and we're just trying to figure out what's in between, but we're not going to make a map that fits reality. There are two different things, so that's the space there for thought, if that makes some sort of sense. Uh, so uh, apologies very much for not no. feeling included. That's, that's really not the, the purpose here. There's no need to apologize, I think, I mean, and I also don't feel personally attacked or anything. I think you did a great job, and I wouldn't have liked to do what you had to do, really. Um, but just to add, I think one thing when, we, when you ask about my research, I'm not trying to spell out my research, but I think one thing that one could really use as label is a lack of geomedia, maybe, so is what I'm partly researching. And there's, I think, been others around that. A lack of, or a problem with, or, I mean, it's sort of like, so rather than taking it for granted is the question of what happens when it's not there, or what happens when it breaks, or what happens when it's, so... And I think that's not a contradiction to what you were saying, but that's maybe a bit yeah. of that sort of thing. And, it, and it's geo, in, in maybe in brackets partly also, because it's always a question of where does the geo start. But that's mm. different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of adding on that, um, I really love to Helena, your, your accounting, because I had been thinking, and in fact, it kind of coming into mind when, during the coffee break something similar without doing any accounting. Um, as a media studies scholar who became, who found geomedia because geography was relevant to where my work was taking me, I'm a media scholar who's pulling in the geo. And, and the question for me is always like, what is geography? Uh, and at the same time, we com I complain about the way other fields just add a bit of media because it's obviously so contemporary, right? So now literature and this like doing media work and, and sociologists are doing media and political science, you know, all of these people are like, oh, media is central. And I and at the same time I think, oh, I'm doing the same thing with, with geography, right? And so is is geolocation, is it maps, is it mobility? And and so I would be curious, in addition to that accounting of the edit of the adding, you know, who is a more trained geographer, who is more media studies? person and how do we make sure that we continue to be in conversation with each other versus just pulling from those other fields as it's fitting what we want to do. Excellent question. Who wants to respond? Well, I can say something because I was in this last panel, it was also our discussion a bit. Um, I thank you because I, I'm uh, can relate to this uh, subject position, <laughs> researcher position or something. Um, I was also drawn to geography uh, as a media scholar and I found it, uh, the label, I call it now a label, maybe not disrespectful, but uh, geomedia, I found it very helpful for me um, because this is a kind of, a, we talked about it last, uh, as a boundary, kind of a boundary concept, boundary object, boundary concept, um, which uh, a lot of people can, could relate to and it's kind of, it, 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 it opened up a space in the middle and somewhere in between. I also found it helpful to have this for, the, to, for getting in touch with geographers because they are kind of, I mean, they, are, uh, they don't mind uh, <laughs> when, you, when you kind of enter their field, but they are not, I mean, they are not indifferent, but they are interested, but, you know, want to stay in there. In their bubble, I guess. But I mean, I cooperate a lot with uh, geographers also in Halle, and, and it's been, uh, it, it's been, uh, yeah, quite good. <laughs> it's fun, and um, so, yeah, I don't know if I really commented on it, but for me, it was kind of a boundary object for me, or a boundary concept, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad I found it, uh, and uh, yeah, because now we're calling ourselves uh, media geographies or working groups, so kind of. Maybe that tells also something that we're kind of moving away a bit from this, because in Germany, kind of the media geography. I mean, even though it's not meant this way, but if you talk about geo media, it's still kind of tied to a single media ontological understanding of it. Oh, it must be something with the GPS inside or something. So it's a very. I mean, it kind of in, maybe that's a German thing, but it kind of is a technical. It, it kind of is associated with a more technical understanding of media than it is as you, than the, the concept evolved in Karlstadt, for example. Yes, Max. Yeah, I wanted to, to come back to the little counting exercise that Elena did also. <laughs> uh, I thought about why, why we don't talk about this elephant, or maybe why 
has become uh, visible. And they're connected to the discussion from our last panel because we talked about maybe the possibility that now we live in a post geomedial world. <laughs> like, like. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no. In the way that post digital <laughs> digital is, uh, is now, of course, discussed, right? That we've become so used to and so tuned to geomedia that now maybe it's not worth mentioning it in an abstract any longer. So that might be a possibility. Um, and also. And then back to what Marlon Hartmann just said, um, I mean, geomedia tends to, to background itself in a way. So maybe dealing with the abs absence and with the disruption and with the breakdown is a way to pull it uh, to the forefront again. And that's a very STS move, of, of, of course, and that's uh, something I think we should be doing actively. Yeah, I, I think just to comment on that as well, the post new media or the post digital or whatever you want to call it, I think that is a change that we are also seeing in the research field that there is more attention being turned to disconnected spaces, disconnected technologies, disruptions and um, disenchantment, if you would, with technology of different kinds. So that might be something going on there. Um, then what to call it? That remains the question. <laughs> yeah. Yes, there was also, I mean, in Siegen, we could also experience a shift before, because first, at the graduate school locating media, we, we all uh, were really interested in a globe, <laughs> like Google Earth, like I did my research on, or we were interested in uh, GPS, you know, uh, in, in these kind of tracking and tracing uh, locative media art pieces and stuff like that. So we're really treating it as a single phenomena, and then all of a sudden, you know, it, it, it kind of evolved into a more a concept, like of placemaking, uh, mediation, and, and stuff like that. So it, it kind of evolved from a, like a, a, a label to a for or, or for a genre. Uh, it evolved from a genre of media or something like that uh, into a concept, more or less, to or a lens to look at media processes. Uh, yeah, Pro procedural. Concept, yeah, Ramon. Yeah, can I, I? I feel a little bit like contradicting myself now, and uh, because of the the, I, I presented some of the conditions that involve the geomedia thing, and I focused very much on the tech bit and the data bit, and I did this because I had worked on this and I had published on this, and I just it was the zone from where to go. But it's not me, as in. Uh, the the geomedia richness happens on a cultural space as as a cultural form. My my PhD remote was on uh, the the liminality between the the nation and the state, as the state being a violent machine that uh, imposes conditions on space, conditions on monumental border building, on on a machine of violence basically that lubricates its own violence to make it easier to, to stand through a cultural narrative that makes us believe that we have something to do with each other, culturally speaking, and that we go back a thousand years and that we call ourselves a nation. And that liminality, that space of contradiction, for me was the first, I'm a Catalan, was the first not fitting element in the, the state with the shape of the nation. And because they were not fitting, I had this concern there and looking into how does this narrative materialize itself? How does this narrative become so extremely violent? How does this narrative build a whole symbolic feeling that you feel solidarity with people who live hundreds of miles south or north from here, but not with people who live 50 kilometers away from here, but just at the other side of the border. All of a sudden you feel brothers with people who don't know very far away and not with people who are very close because someone built a border that's an arbitrary thing. And this connects with what happens with uh, the refugees that have been sounding at the, at the background the whole, the whole conference uh, powerfully and... and, and dramatically and, and necessarily, and the refugees make sense in a geomedia conversation because actually they show, they, they embody with all the, the, the difficulties and all, the, all the, the, the hurting part 
in these not fitting with the space and what is expected them to be and the belong that connects with a, with a previous uh, keynote. So, so for me, my, my comfort zone of thinking is this highly symbolic, semiotic, culturally informed background. That's where I come from. So uh, I, I had to choose and I had to either or limit that thing. But for me, geomedia has to do with this still, this dislocation of culture, if, if that is something that echoes from, from Baba's work, and we could then rethink about all that. But in there, yes, data is all over the place. It matters. Yes, yeah, sorry, I, I needed no, to, no, no, this a, little okay, confession of myself. It's okay to be the data. Uh, Data. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, I'm I'm also I'm also a culture a culture guy. I just want to say it's that. fine. <laughs> it's fine. Please love me. <laughs> it's okay to be with data. Is there anyone not agree? <laughs> I've been thinking as I've been listening to this conversation about sort of framing geomedia um, and thinking, you know, in a really simple sense, uh, geomedia as a sort of framing field is what any, those of who identify with it as a frame do. And so that prompted me to think across the range of what we've heard in the last three days. And I think one way to consider this is I'm seeing geomedia coalescing at kind of the intersection of a lot of the work that we've seen on digital, a whole ecosystem of different kinds of digital placemaking, sort of colliding with an attention to socio-spatial relations, also colliding then with, and many of you have much greater depth than me, uh, with digital mediation and mediatization. So sort of conceptually, I think what I'm seeing enacted under the umbrella of geomedia sort of intersects and circulates around those three sets of ideas. Um, but then also threading across the three days, we've seen a sort of suite of kind of digital practices. You know, we could think them bigger as sort of onto epistemological sorts of practices, a concern with sort of for some of us, geolocative capabilities, platformization, datafication, and then all kinds of sort of representational practices that sort of stretch from the card visual to more aesthetic. Um, so I think maybe it is somewhere in uh, some and all of these things. <laughs> Thank you for that. Anyone want to comment on that or continue the conversation around that? Or reflect upon something completely different? I think that would be a good answer. Yeah, that is actually. <laughs> <laughs> if you think so, uh, if you're pleased, um, I want to thank you again for coming at this late hour in the conference. Uh, I am, for one, very, very pleased with all the discussions that we have had during this panel, but also the other ones that I've attended. It's been very thoughtful and interesting all the way. Um, yes, so thank you for all, to all the participants, uh, Ramon, Pablo, Helena, Karina, for participating and contributing to this discussion. It's time now to close this conference and to say goodbye. <laughs> and <laughs> we do this with some Swedish coffee. <laughs> <laughs>